Is Be Our Guest really Magic Kingdom's best restaurant? Let's see. Hello everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Sam. And you're watching The Theme Park Foodies and we're back at Magic Kingdom. We're doing a lot of videos on Magic Kingdom recently and we had a thought. What is our favorite restaurant at Magic Kingdom? It's a hard question to answer. So this is going to be part of a series where we dine at our top five favorite Magic Kingdom restaurants. Today's video focuses solely on Be Our Guest. And out of those top five, I think they're the actually only sit down restaurants here because we're excluding character dining. So you're not going to see the Crystal Palace on this list, and you won't be seeing the Royal Table. Yeah, which is inside the castle. I will say that Be Our Guest, to me, I think to us as well, has been the most inconsistent restaurant that we've dined at at Magic Kingdom. Yeah, and we haven't been here in like four and a half years. Yeah, So we, we haven't been dying to come back. So just so you guys know, this restaurant is located in the Fantasyland section of Magic Kingdom. It is themed like Beauty and the Beast. You are dining in Beast Castle. There are three separate areas where you could dine at. The first area is where you first walk into. It is the Grand Ballroom. It's that nice dancing scene where you hear them say, be our guest. Uh, the second area is the West Wing, which is where you could see the wilted rose kind of fall off. And then the third area, to me, is the most boring. It's the Rose Gallery. Um, that's kind of more kitty, more just big statues of Belle and Beast. Uh, I hope we are in the ballroom just because I think lighting's going to be better in there. Although I do like the West Wing. West Wing can be a little scary for kids, though. Yeah, and it, you know, it's not considered a, um, a character dining meal. The Beast is there, but you are not guaranteed to meet him. Yes. So keep that in mind. For me as an introvert, like, I'm okay with that. You know, but <laughs> yeah. if you're paying $70, $70 for adults to come to this meal expecting to have a photo with the character, like, not gonna happen. He'll come in, generally he'll greet each area. So like back in 2019, when, or 2020, because last time we dined here, uh, you you could actually meet the beast after your meals. There was a separate area where you can go to the back and meet the beast. Not yeah, they any would longer. take your picture too, it's yeah. nice. Yeah, not, not any longer, unfortunately. Um, I think they should have kept that in there, especially with how pricey it is. Many consider this to be the best place to dine at Magic Kingdom. Um, although I think that the experiences we've had, sometimes they've been very fancy. It tastes like nine, nice, fine French cuisine. The cuisine is kind of French-based, uh, but then sometimes we felt like it's just like kind of elevated theme park fare. Yeah, I do think it's a good alternative if you can't get into Cinderella's Royal Table. Yeah. It's also slightly cheaper than Cinderella's Royal Table, but at Cinderella's Royal Table, you are guaranteed to meet all, yes, the all the princesses. So it's, there's a big difference. Yeah. Depends who's in your family too, if you're a big Beauty and the Beast fan. I think the aesthetic, the interior of this is absolutely beautiful. Probably the best themed restaurant out of all these. And just so you know, uh, these, this top five kind of list, we will rank them in order of our favorites at the end. Uh, they include Tony's Town Square, Jungle Skipper, Jungle Skipper Quarantine, Liberty Tree Tavern, The Plaza, and The Plaza Restaurant, and of course, Be Our Guest. And at the end of the series, we will name our top five all right, you ready to try Be Our Guest, Sam? If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Join us for our fancy dinner with Belle and Beast over at Disney's Magic Kingdom Park. Interesting little tidbit I wanted to provide you guys on our way to Be Our Guest. The Diamond Horseshoe actually is another sit-down restaurant here, but it has the same exact food currently as Liberty Tree Tavern, hence why it's really not on the list. Hey, what's up, man? We love the new show. You guys, you guys are doing great. You're, you're killing it. Thank you for it. Oh. You want to shake your hand? Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> so to get to be our guest restaurant, we're going to have to head straight down the middle of Main Street, USA and head through or around Cinderella's castle. As you enter Fantasyland, you'll see Prince Charming's Regal Carousel. You'll have to head past that carousel straight down. You'll see Seven Dwarfs Mine Train in these like turrets. You're going to head to the left of Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. And right across from Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, you will see Beast Castle and the Be Our Guest restaurant. I do want to say I don't think the forced perspective on Beast Castle works that well. You're supposed to be dining inside the castle and as you check in you actually have to cross over a bridge in which like where you'll see like a waterfall and such but it looks like the castle is about five miles off and it's only like a few steps to actually enter in so it looks like you're more so dining underneath 
Uh, the rocks there, however, the interior is very well themed. Just got called in and we're crossing over the bridge now, but you can see these gargoyles as we walk in. The castle, some snow covering the trees in front of the castle. Very nice. We are entering Enjoy. the Beast Castle. Has the AC on. Oh yeah, Beast has got great AC. You can see stained glass as you walk in. And to the left there is this stained glass portrait of Beast and Belle. Beast obviously is a person. We actually took a picture here when we first dined here. We'll plug that in right now. Great photo spot. I can find it. Yeah, hopefully Sam can find it. I think he can. You can see the main dining hall right as you walk in. It looks like they have stroller parking right over here to the left. As we were being seated, the Beast came out to say hello to his patrons here at his restaurant. Hello. Seating here and decor, definitely not cheap. Look at this nice cushion on the seat. Look at the detail in here and the wood. Very nice. All right, so we've been seated in the main dining hall. So much texture, so much attention to detail in the design in here. If you look up at the grand chandeliers in the main dining hall, you'll see some cherubs and there's a little interesting factoid that you have for that, right, Sam? Yeah, so those cherubs are actually based off of the Imagineers who helped design the restaurant, like their baby photos. And the server also told me that the chandeliers are from Italy. And like the middle one is like 12 feet tall. Oh, wow. It is very beautiful and it snows by the windows. Yeah, back window. If you get it, back window seats, one of the best ones in the main ballroom. I wish it was really snowing because it is still so hot here. <laughs> it's pretty cold in, inside the restaurant, though. This is a prefix dining menu, so you get a appetizer, entree, and a dessert. Let's break it down for you guys. All right, so the prefix is seventy dollars per person. Uh, you can see you have a multitude of different, pretty high quality options: sweet corn bisque, mixed greens, tuna tartare, escargot, which I'm going to try out. And Sam got the French onion soup. As far as entrees go, they are known for their short rib beef. I'm not gonna try to say that, but I, I, you guys can see it. Uh, seared pork tenderloin, roasted palais rouge chicken. I'm probably not saying that right. Uh, pan roasted squash, grilled filet mignon, and trout amadine. They also have these enhancements of the shrimp for an extra 10 bucks and a smoked pork belly for an extra 10 bucks. They only have two dessert options. It's the dessert trio, which we're gonna be going with. It's the chocolate tart, uh, dark chocolate truffle, and the lemon jam. I believe the gray stuff used to be in this. I'm not seeing any gray stuff. I think it might be um, like part of the tart. It might be on top of the tart. Oh, okay. So the gray stuff is on top of the tart. And if you're vegan, uh, they have a vanilla cake with lemon curd. Oh, we are starting with a baguette and some butter. I'm gonna finish my menu breakdown before we break into that bread. They do have all the different wines and beers right here to the left. If you guys wanna pause, we'll see everything they have on here. Some specialty cocktails right here at the bottom. And they do have some specialty options that aren't up charges. So they have these steak frites, which is a chef's specialty. You wanted to get those instead. So we're dining here on a party night. If you are a guest that doesn't have a party ticket, you'll actually have to get this wristband so they can scooch you out after. But there's actually, if you dine here during a party, some special things that you can get. So the appetizer has a roasted bone marrow. The short rib has purple potatoes, which is different. The chicken has some toasted pumpkin. And you actually get an option of a pumpkin cream caramel if you wanted to dine here. A lot of money though for the party and to dine here. All right, so they are moving us through quick. We already got our appetizers, but Sam and I are gonna start off with the baguette because Disney actually has a bread service in park and I didn't realize that and I have to give them points for this. And it's like a giant baguette. And also like, can we take it home? Like I'm wondering, like it's in a bag. It's gonna go to waste. Yeah, we gotta take this home. I want a baguette for home. <laughs> I wanna get my money's worth. I think she said there was like some French fancy seasoning on the butter. Looks like a little olive oil on that possibly as well. It is very warm, the baguette too. We'll give them that. I'm hearing a nice crunch from that crust as you bite into it. I'm wondering how airy the center is and how like fresh the butter tastes. The center is soft, it is super crunchy. I like the butter. There's like a, there's like a sweetness in it. It's a good butter. It's a decent bread service. I'm gonna give it a seven. Starting off strong. I figured this would be like in the top three. I feel like Tony's Town Square is gonna be the weakest one out of out of our five. I like that I have to like break this. You know, like, oh, that's actually a big piece. I only wanna... It is slightly like pre-sliced, but you do have to like tear it a little bit. They also already gave me like bread with my escargot. This is more toasted, it feels like though, than this bread. Let me open up the center. Look at those air pockets in there. I'll try it without any butter first. 
good crust, nice and airy. Let's try the butter out. See those herbs on there. Let's spread this boy. All right. Nothing to blow you away. I'm just happy that Disney's giving me bread with my dinner in park, which you can't really find anywhere there in it, like around. For seventy dollars, there better be bread. Yeah, seriously. Um, Escargot is a high quality option too. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. I'm digging the butter. I'm digging the bread. I, it's good bread service. If I went to like a diner or like any place outside my house, I'd be happy with this. But you have to go higher standards with Disney. I think I'm gonna agree with your seven, Sam. I need to give them positive reinforcement. More bread service, the better. And we have a giant baguette. Hopefully, to bring home with us. All right, so I got the escargot baked in garlic herb butter with a baguette. Um, they also pair all these with like wines and stuff. So it's basically and snails. Look at that beautiful snail, Sam. Will you be having any snails with us today? I will not. <laughs> Garlic is kind of the flavor of escargot most of the time. Uh, this is actually pretty well done. I remember it being chewy at a recent escargot that I had in Disney, but this is not. You got to use the baguette too, because the baguette's gonna absorb all that flavor. So let's get this baguette on here. Get some of that juice on there. Very tender and juicy, which is what you want from escargot. I get a little bit more salt, believe it or not. Usually this escargot will be salty. I get a little bit more salt than this. This is good, though. Better than I anticipated. Very garlic heavy. Very garlic heavy. I'm going to go like, like six. Um, I don't think it's the best thing ever. I like that they have it, but it's not the most high. You know what? Let me go back. I'm going to give it a seven because it's tender escargot. Snails are tender. So I'm going to go seven. It doesn't blow me away, but it's good. So Sam has gotten the French onion soup. This has beef broth, sherry wine, and Gruyere cheese. Look at that cheese pull. That is a beautiful cheese pull on that Gruyere cheese. I wish the cheese though was more cooked on top. I like when you like see like those dark bubbles on the cheese. Like New York diner, French onion soup. Not many things can compare to those Long Island diner French onion soups. Although they use a mozzarella, I believe. It's decent, obviously, super oniony. Cheese is super melty. I'm gonna six. All right, yeah, so two pretty okay appetizers. I have to say, as far as looks go, this is closest to Long Island Diner, I feel like we've seen since we've been in Florida. But I love the smell of the Gruyere. Well, look at that cheese bowl. Beautiful. No, I'm not supposed to use my fingers, but I'm gonna keep that a little neat and tidy. The inside, though, is very soggy, though. The croutons are, like, mushy. I love the Gruyere. I like the, the onion flavor too. I think this is really good. Uh, I think the issue is that like they probably have these sitting out and they just pick them up. So like the bread got very soggy very quickly. Although that's going to happen generally with a cheese with a uh, soup like this. I like the flavor a lot. The Gruyere is like a nice creaminess but also a sharpness that helps complement the flavor of the onion uh, in it and the beef, beef broth. Very good. I'm gonna go seven with that. I mean, it's not like the best French onion soup I ever had. That is uh, going to be reserved for the Quorum Diner in Long Island. Uh, just you know, the scale that I'm working on here. Uh, but this is very, this is very good. I, I, I'm happy with it. Seventy dollars. We will see at the end if it's actually worth that. Uh, but so far, I think we're enjoying our meal. All right, so the entrees are served. Sam, got the filet mignon, and uh, actually, what comes with the filet mignon? There's a lot going on here. Well, so it looks like we got some smashed potatoes on the bottom. We got some green beans. It does look like a big cut. I feel like I had to get my money's worth, so I went with the filet. They did have a steak frites as a special tonight, but I feel like steak frites, the cut, it was like a butcher's cut or something. Butcher sure would have been good, but we just had to go with the filet. Yeah, I felt like filet was more a more high quality cut. It also comes with a brand the peppercorn sauce, I believe, right? Yes. Also, I want to say I didn't finish my soup. I didn't. I, it's too salty for me. I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't the biggest fan of that soup. I ended up I liking it. it. I did like the Gruyere a lot. I do just wish it was more like burnt on the top and it just felt very soggy on the inside. Did they ask you how you wanted this cooked? They did. They always ask you. All right, there we so go. You said medium rare, right? That looks very rare. That's pretty rare to me, yeah. It's very rare, but. I don't mind a little red on my steak, but you did ask for medium rare, and this does seem it's supposed to be a, their fanciest restaurant in Magic Kingdom meeting. Very tender steak. The potatoes are pretty average. I, I like when potatoes have like texture in them. They're creamy, but they're okay. They're nothing special. Nice cut of beef, though. It doesn't have much of a char on the outside, but it is a very tender cut of fillet. I don't think it's. I don't think it's bad. I think it, I think it's pretty good. I would give it a seven. But I've also like. I've had like the best steaks, you know, usually at the resorts are the best um, steaks. 
so it's not like a top Disney steak, but I think it's a good option. I think if you're doing the prefix, I think definitely go with the filet. Not that I've tried the other options, but. All right, so I'm gonna have my hand at the filet. We actually wanted to do a top 10 steaks video, but like that would be so expensive for us to eat all the steaks at Disney World. So you try to search through. This is pretty rare, Sam, but you're saying the cut was very good, right? I mean, it was, it was very tender. Nice and I like I like the peppercorn um, sauce that's on it. I think this is good. I, I think this, you got a really good cut of filet for it to be that tender, being this like kind of low cooked. I think for a prefix option, I think it's a really good option. I don't know many theme parks you can go eat filet mignon at. That's a thing too. It's like you gotta look at comparison comparatively. Do I think Disney could do better? Sure. Uh, I, I I do think this needs something. I know you said you like the peppercorn sauce. I do enjoy it. It feels like it's missing a little something to me for some reason. Though. For, I would think that they would do like a Cabernet sauce because like yeah. a French, like a French wine or something like that. I agree with that. Or a jus, you know? Yeah. Maybe if I got the wine, I could add a little bit to it as I'm chewing on it. Still very good steak. Uh, I'm going to go actually eight with this. I think that you picked a great option. I think that at least the cut that we got is very good. You never know some days you get better cuts than others, but on today, today they gave us a good cut. So this is the short rib bouillon. I hope I'm saying that right. It has a uh, smoked bacon, potatoes, and a red wine jus. We got three pieces of beef. This is what I picked as my entree. This is like, I think one of their signature dishes. I do think Disney usually does a good short rib at each of their restaurants. We'll say about that. I feel like when I get very hot, because it was very hot from being here, I think it, it always affects how I end the rest of the, the meal. And I apologize. What? You got a little bit of everything on that bite, it looks like. The smoked bacon is really good. So I feel like I have more meat, but I actually think that I might actually like yours a little better. More flavor? Yeah, I definitely more flavor. That bacon, that jus. I think the jus is better than the peppercorn. I like these kind of potatoes as opposed to that little bit of mash that I got under mine. It's like a very elevated pot roast. The smoked bacon is delicious. I'm like eating, I'm gonna keep eating your whole thing. This is, I'm, <laughs> yeah, leave me some. This, I'm gonna give this one an eight. I like, oh wow. I like yours, I like yours better. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll prefer mine and we can switch. Presentation is very on point. Definitely a very colorful dish. Pulls apart pretty well. Actually, I think you got a nice juicy piece right here in the front, so I'm definitely gonna go with that. Is that a, uh, yeah, there's a little potato there, some carrots. Let's try it out. Nice mass of textures. Because you have like the crunchiness and the carrot, the very like kind of soft melt in your mouth flavor of the short rib. And then you have like the nice, I'm trying to describe that flavor of the red wine jus. Hopefully you guys can understand how it tastes, but it's, this is really good. I'm gonna go with the eight, Sam. I think the entrees were on point. I'm trying to think of like another type of theme park resort that isn't Walt Disney World where you can really get, get a high quality meal like this. And I'm not thinking of any. Um, obviously like Epcot and like places like that, very high quality food. But, um, or like maybe Dollywood. But I, I honestly, stuff like this is what kind of what separates Magic Kingdom, separates Disney. I wish they could do something like this for the snack food, the park food, because I feel like the park food is kind of flash. I think there are better regional parks that have snacks than Magic Kingdom, Disneyland in general, Disneyland in California, best snacks. But this, this is really good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with your eight. Yeah, uh, and also the aesthetic in here. So you don't want to switch? I'll, we can we can trade some. I'll give you one short rib for a little steak. All right, so we both opted to get the dessert trio. Sam, what is exactly in this trio? So we have a lemon jam macaron, a dark chocolate truffle, and then a chocolate tart with the gray stuff. It used to be chip. Remember, it was like a cup. It looked like chip. Yeah, it'd be like white chocolate chip, and then you would have the... It was inside. It was very cute. So I feel like, looks-wise, this is a downgrade. But I think that it might taste better with that, like, little coating. Or, cause it's not actual... It's kind of a brownie coating, it almost looks like. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, you're starting with that little like macaron. This one the least, so that's why I'm starting with it. I'm only going to work my way up. I was wrong. It's good. It's actually a good macaron. Like, it's very delicate. The jam is good. As It's a nice flavor. It tastes like refreshing. Disney does good macarons. Look at that seven. Oh, wow. Try this great stuff. It's delicious. Don't believe me. Ask the dishes. I said that very aggressively. 
showing on camera, but it looks blue because of like the lighting in here, it doesn't look right. So I'm wondering how the lighting is gonna look on the camera. I think with the lighting on the front of the camera that I have, it makes it more gray. So I put a light at the top of the camera. I don't think that even tastes like gray stuff. It tastes like cookies and cream. That's weird. It does not taste like cookies and cream. It's so strange. Do we have five? You're giving it a five? Yeah. Wow. It's just weird. Like, I, I, this doesn't taste like gray stuff to me. It doesn't look like gray stuff. It doesn't taste like gray stuff. I don't know. Maybe you should talk to the dishes. I don't know what's going on. The best gray stuff that we've ever had was actually in Disneyland at Red Rose Tavern. Yeah. I'm very confused by that. This, I think, is going to be the best thing on the plate. This looks the best. So that's just a chocolate truffle, I believe. Oh, yeah. That's so good. I wish I could just have three of these. Give me three of these. It's very, it's very rich chocolate. I'll give this one a nine. This one I like a lot. All right, it's my turn to try out the dessert. The beast is coming out behind me. He doesn't come to the table though. We're in the corner. So you have to be like in the center if you really want to. This is the third time that he's coming out though. I will say that, but he didn't come anywhere near our section and you are not allowed to get up during this either. So I'm going to start like how you do. I'm going to go the Sam way, start with the macaron. Um, is this some jelly I guess I could put on there? Oh, look at that. And look at this, very tender, already cracked. You want like a little messy macaron. Disney does good macarons. I just wish it was a little bigger. That's good. Jelly flavor, it's a little sweet. Some might find it sweet. I like it, I enjoy sweet things. I'm going to go eight with that. Very good. I think I'm just going to bite this. Like just go straight in, not even use a spoon. I'll spare chip for you guys. I'm getting the cookies and cream flavor from that. There's something wrong with me. I didn't taste cookies. Like, I feel like it's not as whipped as it normally is. I didn't taste the chocolate. I didn't taste Oreos. I get a little, a little bit of it. It's not as forward as it has been. I feel like they changed the recipe. Yeah. I don't dislike this. It's not my favorite thing. I do like the texture of it. Contrasting textures. Everything seems to be coming on like a little jelly on here. I would give that like a, a seven. Um, I think the macaron's better for sure. I like this guy's the star of the show. This is what the dishes should be singing about. He's so, like he's so dark. It's such a dark chocolate and there's like a Grand Marnier like liquor inside of it. It's like a ganache. It's like heavenly, that one. So good. Nine for that. Again, the beast is already into the next room. He didn't come anywhere near this section. Yeah, so obviously you guys know if you do the being around the beast and his presence is something you need, try to get into like the center of the ballroom if you can. I'm going to rank, uh, rank these. Uh, three, two, one. I like the dessert trio. I think the entrees are good. This was elevated. I do think Yargas is like, even though I think that Disney can do better, I think it's going to be a hard, hard one to beat. I don't think it's going to be our favorite, but I definitely think it's going to be a hard restaurant to beat just for atmosphere. Our server um, was amazing. And then the uh, um, entree and the desserts have been very good. This area to the right as you walk in is actually where you used to go to meet the Beast. I kind of want to see... Oh, there's welcome other people here. I want to see if, uh, what's back here now. So this is the room where you used to meet the Beast and it's literally just a waiting room now. Nice fire though. Should utilize it for some, some beast meats. All right, Sam, so is Be Our Guest the best restaurant at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom? No. But what we is? also still have to do the other four, <laughs> so we just started. Yeah, I think um, it's gonna I'm, be hard to beat. Really? Well, this is my philosophy in regards to Magic Kingdom food. It's not very high quality, so I think experience uh, like adds a lot to what I think will be ultimately will be the best restaurant at Magic Kingdom. And I think the experience here, even without the Beast and Green, the experience is unmatched. Like the kinetic atmosphere in the Grand Ballroom with the snow falling in the background and the cherubs on the ceiling. And then you go into the Rose Room and you have Belle and Beast, like a character of them spinning around the center of the room, the pictures around the wall. And then of course, the West Wing at the very end, the Rose sitting in the center of the room, the lightning going off in the background. That kinetic environment can't be found at any other restaurant here. And then you also have to take into account the food quality. We had a very highly uh, regarded for us filet mignon, as well as a beef short rib, which was delicious. You, you have to think we're in a theme park right now. We just ate those things. This used to be a very hard reservation to get. Have we had better dining experiences here? Without a doubt. 
There were lamb chops I had here that were way better when you could meet the beast here. And I don't think currently, in my opinion, it's worth $70. I no, it, I, I, that's the thing for me why I can't say it's the best because no. I, the price to me is just, it's not justified. I feel really bad for little kids out in here because like you can't even get up when the beast is walking around. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's kind of, you know, a weird situation to be in. You, you can know? take a selfie as he walks through, but you can't get up and like go up and take a picture with him. Uh, Which I, I wonder how they manage that because I, I feel like that's got to cause, you know, some problems sometimes. To put this in perspective, uh, Crystal Palace is an all-you-care-to-eat buffet which has about five characters from Winnie the Pooh. That's $60. This is $10 more. While, yes, the cuisine quality is higher, it's not better than any of our top five Walt Disney World restaurants if you guys saw that series. We'll actually link uh, the playlist of that series in the description of this video. Uh, we're doing like a top five series at each the parks, resorts, restaurants. So we did a top five in all of Walt Disney World, and I think the food in any of those top five is better than the food here. The way you can make this be worth $70 is either making it a character meal or increasing the overall food quality, you know? Agree. And like, no matter where this lands on our list, one or five, like, it's all very subjective. Like, yes. we're just giving you our experience and everyone, you know, what matters to you? Like, do you want to be in a castle? Or just want to be in a regular restaurant? Yeah. I also want to add that despite it being high quality, like, the areas that looked like marble, I don't think we're actually marble in there. Um, while the chandeliers are very nice, I don't think that they're, you know, like, the highest quality, but I, the aesthetic itself is very impressive. And it's rare to find a atmosphere like that and food quality like that in any theme park. So I think Disney World does do a great job. Do I think they can do better? 100%. Uh, I am excited to see which our number one is. To me, what in a, my brain... One of our favorite desserts, like, yeah. ever is in one of these restaurants. Yeah. So, like, that's got a factor in, you know, that's got to put that one... I already have higher. an idea what my favorite is. So we will see. <laughs> you will see. If... If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Liking will really help our channel grow. It pushes this video out into the stratosphere of the YouTube algorithm. Helps other people find the video subscribing. It also helps our channel grow. Hit the bell notification so that way you're notified every time when videos come out, which is when, Sam? Every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Thanks so much for watching. Don't count the days. Don't make the days count. We will see you next time. That's all, folks. The reason we didn't include character meals is because I don't think that the experience as far as like food cuisine and quality, wanted that to be weighed more than the character experience, and I think it gives kind of gives them maybe an unfair advantage, possibly. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, because definitely the character meals, it's you're there for the characters. The food is usually lacking. You agreed. And if you were wondering, did they bring home the baguette? We did. We, we did. will. We will be. Look at it in front of the castle. <laughs> That's where actually you can find Cinderella's royal table. Reason we didn't put Cinderella's Royal Table on this list, because it's a character meal. Definitely a fun experience. We haven't been back there in a long time. Yeah. It's expensive. Yeah, we gotta get back there eventually to do it. Also, I review. always, no offense, I always find the princess meets to be a little awkward. Face meets, I think, are harder than, like, costume meets. Yeah. I want to give a special thank you to each and every single one of our members. We appreciate them and their generosity helping us to fund this channel. If you have any interest in a membership, we do have tiers as low as $1.99 a month that include early access to videos and end credits credentials, as well as differing tiers with differing perks. If you want to see all that information, there's a join button below that you guys can check out. But we just want to express gratitude for every single one of you who likes, comments, subscribes, views, engages with this video in any single way. It really helps push this video out here, like we say, into the stratosphere of the, of the YouTube algorithm and helps us make more of them. We really enjoy making them and we appreciate every single one of you who continues to support us and continues to watch them. And as always, we're doing it for Frank.